Okay, this is chapter four of uh, the Getting to Know ARC GIS catalog or uh, textbook. And um, I'm on page 82, and we are we've already got ARC map open, but that's not what we're working with today. What we're working with is ARC catalog, at least for a while here. And so go to our ARC GIS item on the start menu, and there's more than one program here, and the one we want today is ARC catalog. Okay, this is our catalog. I'm going to maximize it here. And um, it says if necessary, click the tree, catalog tree button on the standard toolbar and that will show us the catalog tree over here on the left and on the menu bar we want to go to customize and we want art catalog options our catalog is like uh, a file manager for um, ArcMap and uh, we've got the Windows file manager called Windows Explorer which you're all familiar with it's this little button down here that looks like a yellow folder and it allows you to manage your files on a Windows system. So managing files involves things like uh, copying files, deleting files, moving files, renaming files, things like that. And that is kind of what Arc Catalog does for our Arc Map. Okay, so we want to go to the General tab here and um, clear this. It's already cleared. And um, and click OK. So we want to make sure those file extensions are going to be visible. And now on the standard toolbar, click the Connect to Folder button. It's going to be a little folder with a plus sign on it right here. So let's click on that. And we want to go to the C drive. So go to your computer here. Click on C drive. And we're looking for the, this is the folder that has the stuff that came with this textbook. And we want to expand the folder. And uh, that's what we get. And then it says, click on OK. So now we have a connection. And actually, I'm going to go down one more here. And uh, I want to match what they have. Yeah. So click on GTK ArcGIS, then click on OK. And now in the Arc Catalog tree over here, we should have a list of uh, all of our folders. And it says click the plus sign. I've already clicked the plus sign. Uh, it looks like that if you don't. Click on the plus sign and it expands and shows you all of the chapters. And there's a plus sign next to the Chapter 4 folder. And we've got data and my data and a map document called Example 04C. Expand the data folder by clicking the plus sign. So let's expand that. Okay. Now it says we've got something called a world GDB, it stands for Geo Database. And the reason we need to use ARC Catalog for stuff like this is this isn't really a database, it's a collection of files. And if you go to this folder in Windows, I might actually do that right now. Let's go to the folder in Windows, and I want to go to my C drive. And I want to go to the Yes Repress folder, and inside that I want the GTK Arc GIS, and then Chapter Four, and this folder called Data. Okay, now, uh, and there's by the way, this stuff uh, was not there. We didn't see that before. Um, and now in the Data folder, uh, there's World Geo Database, and this is what the World Geo Database looks like. Okay, it's all of those files, and uh, if you go in here through Windows and look at these files, you have no idea what they are. I have no idea what they are, and I don't care what they are, um, because Arc Catalog keeps track of all of this stuff for me and um, shows me the things that I want to see if I'm doing maps. Okay, so let's expand World GDB here, and let's see what we get for that. Yeah, it looks like it's going to take a few seconds, but okay. So all of those files we saw there uh, were components that when put together will make up 
uh, a layer here called background, one called cities, one called countries, and one called lat long. And okay, now let's go to the standard toolbar. I want to make sure the details button is active and pause the mouse over that. That's the details button. And in the catalog tree, click world GDB. I've already done that, so I guess I got to step ahead here. Um, and make sure the contents tab is active. Okay, so here's my contents tab. And click world GDB and then click contents tab. So now to show me the files, this should look like the bottom of page 85. And now on the standard toolbar, when I click each of the, okay, so these are different ways to view it. And they're just the same or similar to uh, the options that you have in uh, Windows. Um, but the one I think that is probably the most useful here um, is uh, the details one here, uh, just like I think it is in Windows. Although this one's kind of interesting because it actually shows you a little bit of kind of what it's going to look like. Now the countries one, uh, there's too much to actually show you a thumbnail apparently, so they just show you this generic thumbnail. Um, and uh, background lat long really aren't much, but it looks like the cities, you know, you can kind of see the map of the world here. Um, so those are the different views. And now we're on number 12 on page 86. In the catalog tree, click the Countries Feature Class. Okay, a feature class is something that's drawn on the map. A feature a class can be lines, points, or polygons. So this is, looks like lines, this looks like lines. Uh, these are points, and countries are going to be polygons. So a feature class is just basically something that shows up as a layer in your map. Um, so we want to click the Countries. Uh, I'm going to go back to Details view here. Uh, click Countries and then click the preview tab up here and looks like it's going to take a few seconds here and there's our preview and this should match the bottom of page 86 now let's go to the top of page 87 on the geography toolbar um, we want to click the create thumbnail button and let's see the create thumbnail button is this one right here and now let's go to contents over here and um, now let's go back to world GDB and we'll go to uh, this view here and now we actually get one that looks like the contents. Um, so now I'm on number 16 on page, no we're not, uh, I want to click the preview tab here again, click countries and click preview and it'll show me this and now I can um, click the zoom tool which is here and we're going to draw a box around the area north of Australia so let's do from, it looks like from about here, um, down and over to here, something like that. Okay, and so we'll zoom in on that and we want to click the identify tool, which is this one right here. And now we're going to go to this island here and we're going to click on the right side, it looks like. And it should tell us that uh, this is Papua New Guinea and this should match what we see um, in the identify results box on the top of page 88 and uh, a question it's asking us is is it a UN member state so we're gonna have to try to figure this out here um, because uh, we should be able to look down here and uh, we're just kind of looking, you can kind of figure out what these uh, field names mean and uh, this one says UN short name so uh, oh and then down here it says status and UN member state so that's probably the field that we're looking for um, now it says close the identifier results window and use the pan tool. By the way, that stuff we were just looking at a minute ago, let's go click on that again. Um, this is the stuff that you would see 
if you were in ArcMap and you decide you want to look at the attribute table for all the countries. There would be a row in there for Papua New Guinea and each one of these would be in a different column as you went across that row. Okay, now we're on 18. Uh, close it. Use the pan tool uh, to move around the map. The pan tool works here just as it does in ArcMap, so the pan tool is the hand again, so we can just drag it and move it like we want to. Um, click the full extent button. That's the same as it is in ArcMap. And now we see the entire map. And at the bottom of the catalog display, click the preview arrow and click table. Um, okay, there's a preview uh, tab down here, but there's no arrow. But there's also a geography tab down here. And it has an arrow next to it, and uh, there's a table option. And it looks like this should match what we see. I'm just comparing the top row here. It looks like my top row is the same as the one on page 89 in the book. Scroll through the attribute columns. So uh, I'm going to scroll horizontally and look at all the columns here, and there's a bunch of them. So this is every row has data about one of the countries of the world. When you're finished looking, click the preview arrow again and click Geography, and uh, so down here and click Geography. And now let's go to page 90, and on page 90, catalog display, click the Description tab, which would be right here. If needed, scroll down to see the thumbnail you create, as well as keyword tags, summary description, credits, uh, and so on. So, um, and it looks like we have to wait a little bit on this one as well. Okay, so um, this is something called metadata, which is data about your data. And uh, so it tells us some information about this data. Um, so now let's go to number 24 at the bottom of the page, uh, page 90. Click the edit button on the uppermost bar inside the description to access the metadata about the country's feature class. So here's edit. And now we can go here and uh, we can edit stuff in some of these boxes here if we want to make changes. And set the approximate scale range slider to continent. So let's look for that. Um, appropriate, um, well, it says appropriate here, it says approximate in the book. I think they meant to say appropriate. And uh, let's click over here on continent, and we're going to have to drag. Um, I've never done this before, so let's try clicking on continent over here. And I'm not really seeing anything changing here. Um, it says in the catalog display, click the contents tab. So let's click on the contents tab here. Uh, oh, yeah, click on save first. Click on save up here on the top. And then click on con contents. And click on um, our world geo database and on the standard toolbar click the details button and that would be this one right here and that takes us to the end of 4a